Hey, it's Spence with your tip of the day. Today I've got a clever solution for you that we've actually implemented at WP Launchify. And I'm going to show you in a future video how to use this same technique with other types of booking or calendar plugins. In 2021 and beyond, it's really important for you to get the information from anybody who is a potential lead to your business. At WP Launchify in particular, I often do three, four, five, six calls a day with new leads. It's really important, therefore, that I have the way to get back to these people to follow up. And that could be for informational purposes or it could be for sales purposes. Now, as you've seen in other videos, we use outside CRMs like ActiveCampaign and so forth. Uh, those are what I would call SaaS hosted CRMs. But we also really enjoy using a plugin CRM, something like Fluent CRM. Depending on which CRM you're using, they may already have an integration to allow you to do something similar to this. But the way I'm going to show you is really generic. And here's what it does in action. When somebody has a call with me, it's often either 15 to 30 minutes or it's an hour. The hour is typically for a paid customer. Here we've got a button now that allows somebody to go to a form and choose which one they want. But the important thing, and this is most important, is they're adding their first name, last name, and email now, so I'm capturing it, and I can deal with that information in a responsible way, of course, in the future. So here's, let's say, uh, you know, test caller, test at lab secrets, or whatever their email is. The conditional part of it is being done with Fluent Forms. Here I'm letting them choose between one of several different options I have. Now in some businesses, you may have multiple team players. Here at WP Launchify, for example, it might be myself or Luke. You might have three, four, five people. If the nature of your call is not necessarily to take money, but rather to have the phone call, this is a really efficient way to use Calendly, or I'll show you in another video, a new product called WPCal.io to take people into your schedule, but without all of the checkout experience from some plugins like Amelia. So let's say somebody wants a 30 minute call. When they pick their date and time, two things are happening. Number one, they're being added to Fluent CRM and they're receiving a tag for future automation. Number two, they're being redirected specifically to this page. But here's the important part. When they choose a booking day or time, then we'll see that the information that they gave us is already pre-propagated. And that's a really important part because that way somebody is only asked one time to give their first name, last name, and email, and not a second. And here's how we go ahead and set this up. On the back end, I've got a form with Fluent Forms. And this is possible, by the way, to do with other forms plugins, including Gravity and uh, some of the other big name ones. But what I really love about Fluent Forms is how it goes hand in hand with Fluent CRM as an integration. So here, if we look at what I've done, it's really very simple. I've just used the name fields, first and last name, which I got from the general area. I've used the email, which I also got from the general fields. But here's where I did something that you could do a version of. In order to have the conditional URL value, I used the radio buttons. You could also use a drop down if you like. Uh, it's important to choose something that is one or the other. You don't want to have a multiple select here. And when you look at what I've set up, I've basically gone ahead and said, what's the length of the call? This could also be a variable uh, or an attribute like, which team member do you want to have a call with? And here in the options, I've chosen show values. And what I've done is I've written in the label as 30 minutes or 60 minutes, and that's what shows up. But the value is the URL that represents the two different Calendly calendars I have. So if we go to Calendly, we see I've got a third option here that's given out to my clients who are overseas who can't attend a normal schedule. These are later in the evening, and I only give this out directly. But for the two regular calls, I've got one hour or 30 minute, we have the booking page URL. And you can see it in the bottom part of my screen, or you can just, uh, if I open it in a new tab, you can see calendly.com slash WP Launchify slash Spence. And the other one is slash hour. And so I simply put those in as the URL values. And then I said that this is a required choice, but I also, uh, as an option, could select to have one or the other be the starting point. Now, once I've done that, the thing that's going to happen is under the settings and integrations. With settings and integrations, I can have a redirect that takes somebody to one of the values that they've input to the form. 
And so in this case, the custom URL for the confirmation is going to be using the variables from the inputs dot input radio. And the neat thing is, it's really not hard to choose these in Fluent. You simply go to the right hand side and click on the three dots and then choose which field it was that you were using in this case. And here, remember, I labeled that call length. And when I did that, that's what put in this information here. And the next thing I did was I want to make sure to redirect the actual values of two of the other form fields. I want to take the value from the names field and I want to also pass the value from the email field. Now fortunately Calendly has got this documented very nicely. You simply need to use the syntax or the label of name for the uh, one parameter and email for the other. So what I did is very similar to this. I said pass the name field equal to and then for the value here inside of Fluent I did the same thing. I just chose which thing do I want to use and I chose name because with this particular case, um, it's just combining the first and the last name with a separator. So this inputs.names gives us that information. Then I used ampersand and then the attribute of email. And I said that that should equal to the input on Fluent for email. So if you're not technically oriented, don't freak out. Just understand that what this is doing is it's adding some extra field data from my Fluent forms into the URL that's being sent to Calendly. And then Calendly understands where it should go because I'm telling it the name attribute and the email attribute should be filled in with the data that's being sent here by Fluent. So when I send an actual first name, last name, and an actual email, it will send a string that looks pretty much like you'd expect. Name equals Spencer Foreman and email equals Spencer at Lab Secrets or whatever it is that the person inputs. Okay, saving this is all that's necessary. Now the upside is that I get the benefit of having a sort of gateway, sort of a uh, traffic cop that lets me give people one particular place to click, whether it be on a page or a post or via URL. And that form can now act as the brains of where to send somebody. But the neat thing is I can also pass lots of other data and I'll cover this in other videos. What I can do, for example, is inside of the form itself, I could put hidden fields and I can do other things that would pass information about the user and allow me to add them into either my Calendly meeting or something else. But best of all, they would be saved on the user profile, uh, or I should say saved on the contact profile here in Fluent. One last thing I want to show you is the tagging. Now I'm a big fan and actually I like to prove to everybody that marketing automation is the thing you must start with. Here I want to make sure that I can segment the people based upon the fact that they went through this process. So one of the last things that I do here is under settings and integrations, I want to use the option for adding a tag when somebody is making their submission. So in order to do that, I'm going to go under marketing and CRM integrations and I'm going to click on actions. And here what I'm going to do is make sure that I'm going to pass the person to the proper list in my Fluent CRM list. Mine is called main list. I'm going to map the fields, email, first name, last name. And actually in this case, I'm going to map the full name because that's something I'm passing anyway to Calendly. Then I'm using a tag. So I want to give them a special tag, which I set up in Fluent called call with Spence. And if they've already got a contact in Fluent, I say, yeah, don't bother. You don't need to add them another time. But what I also have done is I've forced subscribe somebody. Now you have to be responsible yourself for what you do with the data you collect. If you're in the United States, there's no GDPR or other strict rules about it, but you still need to act with some diligence for your, you know, the respect of the people who've given you their email. The thing I like about Fluent and the method of doing this instead of with Active Campaign is this it gives me a very, very granular level of control to pull out only the people who have had a call with Spence. Then in a future automation, I can see whether or not they've purchased something, had a follow-up call, acquired one of my products, and so forth. So I can actually then do a comparison. Did they start with a free call? Did they start with a paid call? Did they end up buying something? 
And that kind of data is much more effective, in my opinion, than the generic data you might get from something like Google Analytics. And it's something that we're already collecting here anyway, so we might as well start the automation from day one. I'm not likely to use this data to spam these people, but I am likely to go ahead and send them a very small request of a follow-up in the event that, for example, there's interesting information or maybe a service or a product that they would really like. This is a very simple thing for you to set up using what I've shown you here, but you'll also see a greater workup over on the website. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.